Hello everyone, in this module we are going to discuss how to solve uncorrelated non-normal problem using Hassefer lind reliability index and following rackwitz fisler algorithm. So, let us continue our discussion and see how we can uh, develop the models for uncorrelated non-normal case. Now, we developed Rackwitz algorithm and in that algorithm we first convert gx into gz and then using direction cosines and reliability index beta we express gx in a new form where we iteratively update both direction cosine and reliability index. Now, in that process we actually solve a polynomial equation and find out the roots for beta. And if you recall, we discussed how to actually modify this numerical uh, procedure using newton raphson technique. And the advantage of this technique also we discussed. Let us quickly go through the procedure again before we move forward. So, at the k plus 1th step, what we do? We express the limit state function using Taylor series expansion. And you can see on your screen that g of z k plus 1 star, that is the design point in the k plus 1 th iteration, we expand using Taylor series. Obviously, the reference point you use for this purpose is z k plus 1 star that means the design point from the previous iteration. And Taylor series is an infinite series. So, we truncate the series after first two term. That means we consider the gradient vector evaluated at the z k star that means the design point from the previous iteration. Now, obviously, if z k plus 1 star is the point where we have our solution, then obviously the limit state evaluated at this point will be equal to 0. And if we apply that condition, then we can find out z k plus 1 star from this equation you can see on your screen. And the expression goes like this because this is a matrix equation, you have to apply uh, linear algebra to find out z k plus 1 star which has this form. Now, what is the advantage of this uh, representation? The advantage is from the solution at the kth step, we can directly find out the design point in k plus 1 th step. We do not need to evaluate beta and then uh, the direction cosines and with the help of that, we do not need to find out the design point at the end of each iteration. Rather, we directly get the design point in that particular iteration based on the design point that we obtained from the previous iteration. And of course, this iterative procedure is terminated if we satisfy the stopping criteria based on the solution in two successive iterations. And these uh, two conditions we satisfy, we consider the design point in the two successive iteration and their difference. If this expression absolute of this expression is less than delta, then that is the first criteria. And not only that, this z k plus 1 star, that is the design point at the end of k plus 1 th iteration, we can convert it into original space, which is x k plus 1 star, and it must satisfy the limit state. And if the value of limit state is less than the tolerance, then we stop the iterative procedure. Ideally speaking, this g x k plus 1 star should be equal to 0, but because we are opting for numerical solutions, we do not exactly always get 0. But if this absolute value is less than the tolerance, then we terminate the iterative procedure. Then once we terminate that, the last solution that means z k plus 1 star provides us the 
reliability index after the iteration is converged. And this solution strategy is computationally efficient for obvious reason it was, it was first proposed by Rackwitz and Fissler and hence it is called Rackwitz Fissler algorithm. So this is where we stopped in our last class. So let us see how we can apply this and solve a design problem. So let us consider the same design problem that we discussed in the last class. We have a cantilever beam and this cantilever beam on your screen is experiencing a point load at the free end. Obviously the maximum moment will be generated at the support and then we design this beam against its plastic capacity at this point. So our gx is in the form 1 minus pl divided by fy times z or 1 minus x3l divided by x1 times x2. And in fact in the last class we proved the lack of invariance problem as addressed in Rackwitz Fissler algorithm using different formats of limit state. So uh, we can express this limit state in other formats too. So let us solve for this problem. So first we convert gx to Z gz using the transformation that we are familiar with. So we start from the original space x. In that original space we have mu x and sigma x. So we use this transformation to convert x into z. And the properties of x are given. So we have altogether three random variables and you can see their mean and standard deviations are given. And in this case, we are still considering all the variables to be uncorrelated and normal. So we start our iteration because we have three different random variables. So we have basically three different directions and we initiate direction cosines with equal weightage in all three directions. So our starting point is 0 0.5774 and also we assume beta initial to be 3. If you recall this initial guess should be at a favorable location so that we don't need to iterate for um, more number of times and we get immediate convergence. That's the reason if we have a good idea about the ultimate value of beta so we can start with a good guess. Now with these two informations alpha initial and beta initial we can find out what is z initial and our initial values are all same because we have equal weightage in all three directions and our initial values are 1.73 to 1. So with these initial values we start our iteration and we continue iteration for three times and at the end of three times we get the stopping criteria satisfied. In, a, in this case we again consider the reliability index at the end of k plus 1th step and kth step. We take their difference and consider the absolute value of the difference and if that value is less than the tolerance we stop iteration. So ultimately we get beta which is norm of z star. This z star is the last solution from this expression using Newton Raphson's technique. Just notice in this case we are not solving beta in every step but from the initial value we directly get the updated value of the z using Newton Raphson's technique that we have already discussed. And then in the successive iterations we continue the same procedure and finally we get beta which is 2.2577. It is exactly same what we estimated using Rackwitz algorithm where we actually express gz in terms of alpha and beta and then we solve for a polynomial equation based on beta and find out the roots. So our pf is phi of minus beta and because beta is same in this case also our pf estimate is exactly same what we have from the last uh, solution. Then we also get the same design point that we estimated earlier. So this numerical figures clearly shows us 
that the Newton Raphson technique also provides us the same solution for the same problem. And uh, obviously, in this process, we do not solve the roots in every step, and that's the reason it is more computationally efficient. So we directly get the updated solution of b of z uh, from the previous values of z using Newton Raphson technique. So with that, let us move forward. So we consider a different example. This is uh, a RC design of a beam. It's a doubly reinforced beam and having uh, reverse in both tension and compression side. Now, we first find out the capacity. You can see the expression of Gx. The first term on the right hand side of Gx is the capacity. And then we also have a demand. Now, in this problem also, we have three random variables. x1, which is the applied moment. x2, which is xu, that means the depth of neutral axis. And then x3, which is f of sc, that is the strength of compressive reinforcement. Now, again in this case, we start with gx, which is given. And then we convert that into gz. And... In this, uh, we apply again the transformation which is known to us. And then, because again we have three random variables, we start with the initial guess of alpha which is again 0 0.05774. So, the initial guess for alpha is 0.5774. Also, we have our initial guess for beta, which is 3 in this case. So again, because alpha initial is 0.5774 and beta initial is 3, so the initial value of the z again remains same. What we had in the last problem, it is 1.7321. And with that value, we start our iteration and uh, we update the design point in every iteration based on the initial value. So, in this, we use Newton Raphson technique. And again, in this case also, we have three iterations before the solution converges. And we apply the same design criteria. And ultimately, once the solution converges, then, based on the final value of Z1, Z2, Z3, we can calculate beta, which is, in this case, 3.1701. Now, it is again exactly same what we estimated using Rackwitz algorithm. And because beta is same, our uh, PF estimation is also same. And because uh, the reliability index remains same, the design point also we estimate using this procedure remains same. So, these two examples clearly show that Newton Raphson technique can be adopted, and this Rackwitz Fisler algorithm is computationally efficient, where in every iterative step we do not need to solve for beta, and that root finding numerical exercise can be bypassed, and the new design point can be directly obtained from the derivatives of Gx which is converted to gz. However, there are some convergence issues when uh, we adopt newton raphson uh, based rackwitz fisler algorithm. Uh, this is uh, a numerical convergence issue and has nothing to do with the hassoffer lind reliability index. So, sometimes what happens if we have uh, gx, which you can see the it is represented by this green line, then it may so happen that uh, the moment we try to estimate the new design point in Z space based on the previous design value, then the solution may diverge because of the nature of the limit state. Now, again, as I said, this is the problem with the numerical representation of newton raphson's algorithm for finding the roots and it is not exactly a drawback of 
Hasselhoff-Lind definition of reliability index. If this happens, then uh, the iterative procedure continues. We normally have a stopping criteria of number of iterations. This I will demonstrate when we'll develop MATLAB codes uh, as we progress in this course. And there uh, we will apply a stopping criteria if we see the iterative procedure continues for long. And that may be because of this reason where the solution starts diverging from the initial value. And if we encounter that, then instead of Newton Raphson technique, we adopt any other technique, for example, Rackwitz algorithm, the older way that we adopted earlier to solve the problem. In fact, uh, there may be other cases where um, this uh, Newton Raphson based algorithm continues the iteration without converging. So, convergence is a major issue, as you can see in this case. The limit state equation you can see on your screen gz is z1 z2 minus c equal to 0. And then in that case also uh, the solution based on Newton Raphson algorithm keeps on iterating without converging to a point. A uh, detailed discussion you can find in this paper which is really very useful when you apply Newton Raphson based algorithm for finding the reliability index. However, as I said, this is a numerical convergence issue. If we encounter such a problem, then we need to adopt other solution strategy and we can solve the reliability index for the same problem by passing the solution strategy developed using Newton Raphson's algorithm. So, with that uh, discussion, let us move forward and we consider now uh, different options. If you recall, uh, we discussed uh, Rackwitz algorithm and after that discussion, we also identified that there may be different possibilities and out of that, today we are going to discuss how to solve uncorrelated non-normal case using Rackwitz algorithm. So, for that, let us first discuss how we can convert non-normal random variables. So, in this case, imagine a random variable x which follows an arbitrary PDF f of x and CDF capital F of x. Then, if we need to solve for reliability index where gx is defined by this kind of arbitrary PDF which is non-normal. In that case, we can adopt a technique called equivalent normalization. So, how does it work? Let us consider a point, say x star, small x star and at that point, we will design a normal distribution which will be exactly same to this arbitrary PDF and CDF and our task is to find out the parameters of this normal distribution. Now, we know normal distribution has two parameters, mean and standard deviation. So, we can find out mean and standard deviation of the equivalent normal distribution just by equating PDF that means probability density function and cumulative distribution function. So, you can see the schematic diagram. We have this blue line representing any arbitrary PDF. And this x star is the point where we wish to fit a normal distribution in equivalent sense. For that, we estimate f of x at this x star point and then we equate the PDF of the original distribution and then the first equation is uh, formulated. Then what we do, we equate the CDF 
of the two distributions. Now this way we develop two equations. So the first equation where we estimate PDF at the point x star and obviously um, for the equivalent normal distribution we have 1 by sigma equivalent times small phi of x star minus mu equivalent by sigma equivalent. So that is the first equation and if you can see this equation there are two unknown parameters on the right hand side mu equivalent and sigma equivalent as obvious for normal distribution. So we also equate capital CDF. So in this case capital fx of x star will be equal to capital phi of x star minus mu equivalent divided by sigma equivalent. Now if we simplify these two equations, the first equation gives sigma equivalent and the second equation gives mu equivalent. So once we solve these two equations and if you look at the right hand side of these two equations, everything is known to us. So we know this x star point where we are going to find out the equivalent normal distribution. So we know capital Fx of x star and small fx of x star. So we can easily find out the value of this expression on the right hand side and estimate sigma equivalent and then once it is done we solve the second equation where again on the right hand side we have sigma equivalent which is derived from the first equation and the remaining expressions are known to us so we can find out mu equivalent. So in this way the main aim is to equate PDF and CDF at the reference point which in this case is X star. So how does it look like? So if we have say this is the arbitrary distribution and at this point where you can see this red dot and at this point we want to find out an equivalent normal distribution. So we equate PDF and CDF and find out mu equivalent, sigma equivalent and then we can get an equivalent normal distribution. So effectively what does it mean? The y coordinate from the original distribution and the equivalent normal distribution both of them are same and the area under these two distributions which are shaded they are also same. And in this case figures are not in scale but if you look at the abscissa you can see that the y coordinate at this x star point matches for both this distribution. So let us take an example. So we are going to find out the equivalent normal parameter that means mean and standard deviation of a random variable x following log normal distribution with sample mean and standard deviations are given which are 1 and 0.5 and we are going to find out this equivalent normal parameter at x star point. So in this case x star is 1.5. So if we plot this log normal distribution where the values are all positive so at 1.5 you can see the shape of this distribution looks like what is represented by the blue line and in this case let us um, solve the problem for log normal distribution if you recall this is the expression for log normal PDF where x is greater than or equal to 0 and it has uh, two parameters x tilde and sigma ln x both of them are related to mu x and sigma x the delta x you can see it is the coefficient of variation that means delta x is the ratio of sigma x and mu x. So from these two expression we can find out the parameters of log normal distribution and once we do that we can go back to the original expression of PDF then we can plot this function as x changes from 0 to infinity. So 
let us apply the transformation that we have just discussed. So, before that, uh, for log normal distribution, we can further simplify. So, we apply a transformation u is equal to 1 by sigma ln x, ln x. We apply a transformation where u equal to 1 by sigma ln x times ln of x by x to n. So, then if we differentiate both sides, we get this expression and then the CDF can be simplified and once we do that, we get this expression 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to x star exponential of 1 by u square minus of that du. So, this is the expression of normal distribution. That means, we can estimate CDF of log normal distribution with the help of standard normal table. And that what you can see on your screen. Now, uh, if you differentiate this expression, you can uh, express PDF of log normal distributions using uh, standard normal PDF which has this form on your screen. Now, if we use these two expressions, then um, we can simplify the mu equivalent and sigma equivalent. So, sigma equivalent is simplified and finally, it comes out to be x star times sigma ln x if you put the expression of capital fx of x star that we have just derived. Similarly, we can also find out mu equivalent where again we put the expression of CDF and we can simplify that expression. So, for log normal distribution, we get the expression for mu equivalent and sigma equivalent in this simplified form which is only possible for log normal distribution, not for other distributions. But this simplification makes the estimation very handy. So, we can start from the sample mean and standard deviation. In this case, it is 1 and 0.5 and from that, we can estimate the parameters of the log normal distribution and based on that, we can find out what are the mean equivalent and sigma equivalent. Mm -hmm. So, let us solve this problem. So, if you solve that, in this case, we have mean equal to 1 and standard deviation is 0.5. These are the sample mean and standard deviation. So, based on that, we find out the parameters of the log normal distribution. In the first two line you can see on your screen. And then once we do that, we can easily find out sigma equivalent and mu equivalent. So, the expressions are there, you can see. Now, once we plot the equivalent normal distribution, we get this figure. And in this figure, again, you can see this reference point which is 1.5 in this case, at that point the value of relative frequency of occurrence that means the small pdf they are exactly same and also the area under this curve up to the point reference point which is in this case 1.5 these two areas are same. So, we balance small pdf and capital CDF to find out the two parameters of the equivalent normal distributions. Now, one point to be noted here, if we change this x star point, that means reference point, obviously the estimation will change and we will get a different value of equivalent normal distribution. However, as we keep on changing x star, we can easily estimate the equivalent parameters and then instead of using the original function, which is a non-normal, we can adopt this equivalent normal distribution and then we can carry out our estimation for reliability index. Before we solve that problem, let us again consider a different example. So, in this case, again our sample mean and standard deviations are given and the random variable x is following Gumbel distribution. And the reference point in this case is also given. So, our task is to find out equivalent normal parameter. So, for Gumbel distribution, we have the expression on your screen. It has uh, 
again two parameters alpha and u and if you plot this distribution it looks like this and the shaded region represents the CDF estimated at this reference point x star. So again in this case uh, we find out mu equivalent and sigma equivalent but in this case no simplification is possible using um, standard normal distribution. However, if you look at these two expressions, we know everything on the right hand side. So, we can estimate sigma equivalent first and then using that value, we can also find out mu equivalent. So, once we do that, we get the equivalent normal distribution in a similar way we obtained for the log normal case in the previous example. And in this case also, if we find out CDF from the original distribution, which is in this case Gumbel, and the same value of CDF we obtain from the normal distribution, where we estimate mu equivalent and sigma equivalent using the expressions that we have already derived. So, as I have already explained that if we keep on changing this reference point, our equivalent parameters for the normal distribution will also change. However, that is not a problem as we adapt this model in the Rackwitz algorithm. Every iteration where we have non-normal distributions, we can find out equivalent normal distribution and that is how we can convert a non-normal distribution into an equivalent normal distribution and then we solve the problem for reliability index. So, the algorithm goes like this. Again, we start with the limit state gx equal to 0 and that gx equal to 0 we convert into standard normal space that is gz equal to 0. Then in the standard normal space, we differentiate gx and find out the gradient vector which is represented by capital G and then once that is done, we are about to start the iterative procedure. So, we start with the initial guess of alpha and beta and based on that, we set our first design point in the z space. So, we find out z i based on alpha i and beta initial value. And at that point, z i, if it is representing a non-normal distribution, we find out equivalent normal parameters. So, these are mean equivalent and sigma equivalent using the expressions we have already derived. Then, we express the limit state in terms of alpha and uh, beta, where beta is the unknown, that is what we are going to solve. So, we develop this uh, polynomial expression and find out the roots. And if we wish to bypass this uh, using rackwitz fisler algorithm, we can directly find out the new design point, which we have already discussed. So, once we estimate beta, then again we update the gradient information and then with that we update direction cosines and then we check for convergence. If the tolerance limit is not satisfied, then again we go back to the step where we again find out the equivalent parameters and continue the iterative procedure unless and until the convergence is achieved. So, with that, let us move forward and solve problem. So, we consider again the same example, the same cantilever beam subjected to point load at the free end and then we design against plastic moment capacity. So, in this case, we consider the second random variable to be log normal. And again, the problem is where the random variables are uncorrelated. So, we have only non-normal random variables. So, we transform this limit state using 
again the same expression. However, in this case you can see because the second random variable is non-normal. So, in that case we transform that using mean equivalent and sigma equivalent for this particular random variable estimated at the reference point which is in this case z2. And for the third variable, because that is again normal, we have the same transformation. So, using this, we then convert the gz into a new form where we use mean equivalent and sigma equivalent. And then we further simplify this expression, what you can see on your screen. So, once we set the initial design point in the z space, we can actually estimate mean equivalent and sigma equivalent and then we can simplify this expression because most of the parameters in this expression are known except z1, z2, z3. So, we express z1, z2, z3 using alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 and beta. So, these alphas are direction cosines and then we keep this beta as the unknown parameters and then uh, we thereby get a polynomial equation that we solve to find out the roots. So, our initial guess again because this is having three random variables. So, our alpha i initial is 0 0.5774 and then beta initial is 3. Based on these two parameters, again we have our z initial and at that point first we find out mean equivalent and sigma equivalent using the parameters of the distribution x2 which is log normal. So, this is the key step when we have non-normal parameters that we convert into equivalent normal parameters using the models that we have just discussed. Now, once we have this, we can find out the new estimates of alpha which is based on the derivative of this gz in the z space that we have already discussed. So, we have the new estimate of alpha and then we start the iterative procedure and then in this case after third iteration, the estimate of beta converges based on the criteria where tolerance is point. 0, 0, 1. And then once the iteration converges, then we get the design point in the z space. Based on that, we can find out the reliability index, which is in this case 2.2537. And then after third iteration, we can find out what is the pf, that is phi of minus beta. And in this case, it is 1.2. 1 into 10 to the power minus 2. And then, because this is the design problem, we have to fix the design point and that you can see the last values of x1, x2, x3. These are the original space in the x space, the values of x1, x2 and x3 you can see. So, this is the point where we design the beam and if we design at that point, then we can ensure that we will always have a PF of 1.21 into 10 to the power minus 2. So, let us continue the same problem, but in this case, let us change the definition of the random variable and in this case, we have x3, the third random variable as our log normal distribution. So, follow the same procedure. I am not going to describe again in this case. So, we start with the initial guess and find out uh, z value and then at that point because the third one is now following log normal distribution. So, for third random variable we find out equivalent parameters and you can see on your screen mu 3 equivalent and sigma 3 equivalent. So, we estimate these parameters and then we convert the non-normal distribution into equivalent normal distribution and then continue the solution. So, in this case, after fourth iteration, 
the solution converges and after fourth iteration we get the optimal design point which you can see on your screen and then once we get this optimal design point we get beta which is in this case 2.1887 so it changes from the previous estimate where we had x2 as log normal distribution and then obviously after fourth iteration because the beta value changes based on this estimate of beta we then finally find out pf which is phi of minus beta and that turns out to be 1.4308 into 10 to the power minus 2 and also if you notice that at the end of fourth iteration we again estimate the design point in the original space so the values of x1 x2 x3 you can see on your screen and this also changes from the previous estimate where we had x2 as log normal. So as the definition of the random variable changes, so does the design point. And accordingly, if we design the case, we can ensure the level of reliability or probability of failure, whichever way we wish to express. So with this problem, we have seen how we can extend Rakuts Fissler algorithm and solve uncorrelated non-normal problems using equivalent linearization. And with that, let us uh, close this discussion uh, today. Uh, in our next class, we will continue uh, on the same topic and we will see how we can solve the most general case where we will have correlated non-normal variables. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.